Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I got myself a new toy. I picked up one of these Roku stream bars. Um, I think this is the Pro model. Um, I picked up the same one we have in our living room because the sound is surprisingly good for its size. Uh, but I've got an old flat screen TV in my man cave slash office uh, that doesn't have any smart features. So, you know, no YouTube, no Netflix or Prime or anything like that. Um, and it's also got some pretty crappy speakers and this guy sounds pretty good. Uh, but it doesn't really fit. Well, it kind of does, but let me show you what I mean. All right, so here's the TV in question. It's got this big base that sticks out way in front of it here. And if I get rid of my man cave decorations, this does fit here, but it looks kind of silly way out in front of the TV. Um, and I think the further it goes back, the better the sound quality is going to be uh, as well. When I ordered it, I was imagining it sitting right up against the TV, but of course there's this you know, stand here, so it ends up kind of aiming right down at the table and looking all wonky. Um, I did try putting some stuff underneath of it. That's what these coasters are, are sitting here for. If I kind of jack it up on some, some stuff. There we go, that's probably a bit high. Um, probably doesn't have to come up quite that high. Let me pull you out of the tripod. So we've basically just got to get it up over that stand so that it can go all the way back to the, uh, the TV here. So what I'm thinking is we could just make two sort of stands that sit underneath this guy on the end. But I want to end up with something that is reasonably aesthetically pleasing and doesn't look as ridiculous as these stacked up coasters under here. So we've got a curve to work with. We don't have to hit that dead on perfect, but let's see what we can come up with. All right, so if we flip this guy over, it's got a rubber foot here, rubber foot here. Unfortunately, both of those are going to fall where the TV stand is, so we can't key off of those. That'd be convenient. Um, it's just a flat surface over here, but I think that's okay. I don't expect this guy to really go anywhere. Um, it does have surprisingly good low range for its size, but I wouldn't say it really pumps out any bass that's going to have this thing vibrating around. Um, so what I did was I just took a sheet of paper, um, and I just traced that radius uh, to get an idea kind of of what it is, and then folded it over where I thought that radius started. And I'm just gonna grab a calipers and get a rough idea what this is. We don't have to hit this dead on. It just has to look, you know, decent. So that looks like about 55 to me. We'll call it 55. Again, as long as we're close, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be good. And I did measure this thing in length. Uh, unfortunately, my calipers don't go that big, uh, but just use a measuring tape. And we'll make sure that whatever we design for the feet, we leave, you know, I don't know, a couple mil millimeters clearance on either side from that TV stand so that we're close. So it's meant to look like it belongs there, but, uh, you know, isn't so tight that uh, we've got to do three versions to, uh, to get it right on. So we fire up SketchUp. Let's uh, see what we can do. All right, and here is what I came up with. I did roughly model the sound bar itself and sort of the, uh, the lower part of the TV stand, um, just so I could kind of get an idea how everything was gonna fit together. And it does look a little bit silly here with these gaps, but we're not gonna see these because this slope isn't this severe in the actual stand and it's gonna be dark back there. I think this is all gonna kind of blend together nicely. So if I hide this, and we'll hide the TV stand as well. You can see I basically just have, these are the same part just flipped. Um, and they have, they, they follow that curve of the sound bar. Uh, they come over as far as they can while still having a little bit of clearance on either side of the TV stand. Um, and they've got a nice curved inset here as well, just to kind of, I give them a little pizzazz. I, I don't want it to look like just two blocks of plastic underneath. And I think this is gonna give us some shadow lines uh, to just make it look like they belong there versus they just got hacked in place. 
Um, the one other feature I did here is uh, I did uh, a little bit of a relief here on the bottom or an inset um, for some foam tape. Uh, I am a little bit worried about vibration with these, just if these, you know, because it's a hard surface on a hard surface. Um, and I just want to make sure that there's something that kind of gives a little bit just so that everything lines up nicely. So I designed these exactly an inch and a half wide. I've got some nice neoprene foam tape that is that wide. And I can just cut some pieces to fit. And the tape is about two times as thick as this, uh, this inset here in the bottom. So um, when it compresses a bit, it should come almost all the way down um, flush to the bottom surface of this. So, all right, let's, uh, let's print these out. All right, let's see how close we got. Hope it's close enough. I don't want to print this again. Um, that is this one. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's pretty close though. Uh, this is going to sit back a little bit um, behind this cloth grill anyway, and it's all black. I don't think we're going to notice that. Looks like I am probably off. It might have been. Yeah, it's probably 50. I think I estimated it was 55. It looks like it's probably about 50 millimeters. Uh, that's not so bad though. Um, let me find my inch and a half foam tape and uh, we'll get that foam into the recess here. This, uh, this neoprene foam tape is awesome stuff. Uh, I can't remember who turned me on to this stuff originally. It's not cheap, but I have found so many uses for this. I will link this down in the description Below. I mean, it's not overly expensive either, but it's not like it's it's not two bucks. Um, I think it might have been like 20 bucks for a big roll of it. I'm down to just sort of the last part of it here. All right, let's go try it out. I'll tell you what, I am pretty happy with that. The lighting in here doesn't do it justice, but that actually, uh, really like the look of the, uh, sort of the, the recess in there. I don't know, just kind of sets it out. Looks like it's meant to be that way versus that I'm trying to hack something together to, to make this guy fit the way I want. Is there room for my man cave decorations? Yeah, I think I can make something work there. All right, guys, I'm calling that job done. Happy with how it looks, happy with how it works. Uh, very simple design. I mean, I think I've got probably 30 minutes invested, uh, not counting the actual print time or the time I'm gonna spend editing this video. And I'm really happy with it. Uh, without a 3D printer, I probably would just have some painted wood blocks under there or something. And you know, it just, it wouldn't look near as nice as this and it would have taken me twice as long to do. Uh, if you're into this sort of thing, check out my channel. I've got a bunch of other videos just like this one where I'm solving a problem out in the shop and around the house. Uh, here in my cave. Um, some of them are totally from scratch designs like this breaker interlock I designed. All my designs are completely free. STLs are available right on my site, fpfdesigns.com. That is linked down in the description. And guys, if you do choose to subscribe, I'll see you next Friday.